Switzerland is very exciting during summer. Pretty much all of the attractions are open. You can go for hiking, zip lining, seeing glaciers and just spend a great time anywhere in the country. Stroll through the alleys of the cities or villages or go more raw by having a retreat up in the Swiss Alps. After traveling around the entire country during the past years, I'm proud to present you the top 10 things to do during summer here in Switzerland. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jemo, I'm a Swiss traveler, mostly posting videos about Switzerland, Southeast Asia and the world. Now it's time to hop in with number 10 and that would be Zurich. Welcome to Switzerland's largest city. This here is Zurich. Zurich is a very vibrant city with a wonderful river promenade along the Limmat. I've been studying in here for five years and what I always found the most fascinating were the many alleys, secret passages and the nice blend of old and modern. When you visit this town, make sure to stroll around the Bahnhofstraße, the shopping boulevard, go up to the Lindenhof to enjoy a nice view up to the universities and the Limmat Quay, or just get lost in the old town at the Niederdörfli. Zurich is one of the most expensive cities in the entire world, but with a proper plan you manage to spend your money wisely. Very nice is to take this ride up to ETH by taking the Polybahn, then enjoy this vista from the Polyterrasse, walk downstairs to the Niederdörfli and head over to the Bellevue. Do also take a boat ride on the Limmat to see the beautiful cityscape passing by. Two of my favorite places at where I love to go for a tea or having a small bite would be at the Stochen Terrasse, that one offers you this calming view, or then at the Honold, which is at the Rennweg. Number 9 is my favorite pass road and that would be the Vorkapos. Having been here for a numerous times since my childhood, I always have been astonished by this pass road and the glacier. Unfortunately, the glacier is melting at an alerting rate, but then fortunately it is still there and even better, you still can access its interior. I consider this being one of the very highlights here in Switzerland during summer. Not only is the glacier nice, but also the pass road is very exciting and here it doesn't even matter that much from which side you're ascending it. From late June to late September you even can take the four-car steam railway train that departs in Oberwald and Realp. Now personally, I prefer doing this ride from Oberwald to Realp. The four-car steam railway train is definitely one of the best nostalgic attractions in Switzerland. Number 8 is very close to where I live, and that would be the Rheinfalls. This is the highest river waterfall in all of Europe, with a remarkable height of 23 meters. But even though it's not that high, it is really a must-see attraction when you come to Switzerland, especially during summer. There's quite a lot to do in here, so make sure to spend at least one hour, much better if two hours or more. I basically know this place by heart as it's only 15 minutes from where I live, so you can guess I've been countless of times here, but yet I still cannot get tired of this place. Definitely do take the yellow boat ride to the rock, up there you can enjoy standing in the middle of the waterfall and then, if time allows, also ride the blue boat to get to feel the power of this waterfall as we're going to get really close. You can also walk around the entire waterfall, for that take the red ferry to cross over to the side of Zurich, visit the many platforms, they're all really great, you can trust me on that, and then ascend the castle using this elevator. On your way back, you will have to cross this bridge and then continue the trail from where you get to see the Rhine Falls from various angles. Now if you plan to spend the whole day in here, I really recommend you to visit the Adventure Park Rhine Fall. There you'll experience a lot of thrill, climbing obstacles and panoramic zip lines. 
But don't worry, if that is all too wild for you, then instead go for a romantic dinner at the Schlissi Welt. But here you have to do your reservation before, because the locals really love to dine in here. For number 7 we have to change to the canton of Ticino and that would be the region around Lake Lugano. This is another very touristy region, but you can really find your way out of the crowds, so don't worry. Certainly, do visit the city of Lugano, roam around the many alleys, enjoy the various viewpoints and walk along the lake promenade. Now, if you take a close look at the bay and Mount San Salvatore, you probably might see there is actually a resemblance to Rio de Janeiro. Talking about Monte San Salvatore, you may ascend it by taking two funiculars from nearby Paradiso. Once you've arrived at the top, you'll be able to enjoy a fantastic view over the city of Lugano and the entire region. There are also many beautiful villages to be visited in the Lugano region. The first one would be Carona, that one you can actually easily access from hiking from Monte San Salvatore. Then there is also this village here at the tip of the peninsula, it's called Morcote. And by the way, it has been awarded as the most beautiful village in Switzerland in 2016. Then there is also Gandria, probably the steepest village you could find in Switzerland. Some people say this village is the Swiss-Italian version of Austrian Hallstatt. For those who are very spontaneous with their itinerary in Switzerland and yet don't know where to go, I highly recommend you to visit the Swiss Miniature at Melide. At there you can see the most important cities, landmarks and mountains all on a small scale. Everything in here is really done with much of love. Number 6 is my favorite waterfall here in Switzerland and that would be the Giesbach Fall. This is one of the most nostalgic places you could visit in Switzerland. This is fairy tale. this is the real Switzerland wonderland you'll be looking for. The Giesbach waterfall has 14 stages and seems like a gigantic well of never-ending water. The best way to arrive here is by boat. You can travel from Interlaken, Isletwald or Brienz. Having arrived at the bottom, you either can hike up and pass the waterfalls or you may enter the oldest, still functional funicular of Switzerland. The ride is short, but certainly very enjoyable. You will arrive at the hotel from where you can hike up to see more of the Giesbach Falls. Make sure to cross over this bridge and then head further up to pass behind the waterfall. It's a really nice experience. A big highlight is to stay at the Grand Hotel Giesbach, a 19th century hotel at where you can have your perfect nostalgic experience. We're now moving to the upper half of this top 10 list of the best things to do in Switzerland during summer. Number 5 would be the Lavo. The region along the northern shore of Lake Geneva, or as the locals call it, Lac Léman, is one of the most beautiful ones in all of Switzerland. One of the biggest treasures of a man-made natural landscape are the Lavo, the Swiss wine terraces that have been awarded with UNESCO World Heritage status in 2007. The entire region is good for hiking, the vineyards are often quite steep, but then they also offer you great vistas over the lake, the Swiss and the French Alps and even the town of Evian. There are many villages to be visited around this place, the most important ones would be Epes and saint saphora At the eastern end of the Lavo you can visit the Chateau Chillon, probably the most beautiful castle you could find in Switzerland. If you walk a little bit along the shore of the lake, direction west, you will find some great photo spots where you can snap your perfect pictures of the castle, the lake and the Swiss Alps in the background. For number 4 we again have to change to the canton of Ticino to the Valle Verzasca. No doubt this is one of my very favorite valleys. 
It's located in Ticino, the Italian-speaking part of Switzerland. The Valle Varzasca has been a very popular place for decades. It's mainly visited by Swiss Germans, people from Germany and Italy. But recently, even international tourists started to flock to this fascinating place. The Valle Varzasca is best known for its dam that was featured in 1994's James Bond Goldeneye with the opening scene of the majestic bungee jump. Very popular is also the small village of Lavartezzo that is flooded by tourists during July and August. This got much to do with this iconic bridge and the clear but very cold waters that have been very fascinating to many visitors. Surely consider coming here for a swim, but then be aware of the stream and the very cool temperature of the water. Usually it's around 12 to 13 degrees and at best it's only going to rise up to 15. There are also some very charming villages to be visited in this wonderful valley, for example Corippo, a village that is inhabited only by roughly 12 people. And then Sononio, a favorite among us Swiss Germans. There are various grottos around, traditional Ticinese restaurants at where you can have a very local Swiss Italian food like polenta, formaggio, salumi and more. We're now moving up to the podium of the best things to do in Switzerland during summer. Number three is in the canton of Bern and that would be the beautiful lake called Schienensee. This lake has been all over social media during the past years. I have visited it for the first time in 2021 with this Bavarian YouTuber called Flo. We drove to Kandersteg and took the funicular up to then start our hike. It was a steep but rather quick ascent. Only after 20 minutes we started to get fantastic vistas over the lake. We were really impressed with so many viewpoints that we had to stop quite often for taking our photos. The hike would have continued, but time was too short and we decided to go to take the Alpine roller coaster just next to the cabin ride. This is one of the most fun experiences you can get when you come to the Swiss Alps. Now, as much as the lake charms from above, but do not forget to also hike down to the lakefront at where you can eat and also enjoy the serenity. Number two is also located in the Bern Oberland and that would be the magical Lauterbrunnen Valley. Welcome to Lord of the Rings or the Valley of 72 Waterfalls. Yes, you heard right. There are in total 72 waterfalls in only this valley. This region certainly is one of the most visited in all of Switzerland, but it's for a good reason. Most of the people travel to the village of Lauterbrunnen to see the iconic Staubach fall, to go to this famous Instagram spot, and then head up to the top of Europe, the Jungfrau Joch. Up there you can get your snowy experience during any time of the year as it's mostly cold enough. Do also visit the town of Wengen, a car-free village that is also good for hiking. There's a lot more to experience, certainly consider going to the Tömerbach Falls, one of my favorite attractions in all of Switzerland, or then head up to Müren and the Schildhorn. The Schildhorn is a James Bond film location and compared to the Jungfrau Joch, the better option for those travelers who are more aware of their budget. Before I'm going to reveal you the number one best thing to do here in Switzerland during summer, here are a few top honorable mentions. The zip line at the Grand Dixons, the village of Grimenz, Mount Pilatus, and Stein am Rhein. And here's the best place to be visited during summer in Switzerland. Number one goes to the amazing Aletsch Glacier. 
Here it is, the king of the Alps, the majestic Aletsch Glacier. With a total length of 22 to 23 kilometers, it is the largest glacier of Switzerland and the Alps. You can see the Aletsch Glacier from various places, for example the Jungfrau Joch, but then my favorite one would be the viewpoint up on the Ekison. From there you can see the bend of the Aletsch Glacier, which is a really impressive alpine panorama. During summer, you can also come up here for sunrise, a tour that you need to book through Aletschbahnen. It starts in the very early morning, you'll reach while it's still dark, and then you'll witness how the sun is going to climb above the peaks of the Swiss Alps. This spectacle is going to be accompanied by Alphorn. I think it's not possible to be any more Swiss. You can also arrive here during the afternoon, it will be visibly more crowded, but then the people will equally distribute over the area, so it doesn't really feel combusted at all. I came here a couple of times, even with my fellow travel buddy, Ryan Shirley, who is a big YouTuber from the United States, producing fantastic videos. Please also take a look at his channel, I left a link in the descriptions. You can also hike down to the Aletsch Glacier, I did that together with Doma, and we had a lot of fun. The hike from the Ekishorn took about two hours. You could actually even take a shortcut through this tunnel, well, I wish I knew that before. And then, eventually, you will arrive at the Meerjellensee. From there, it's another 40 minutes to the front of the Aletsch Glacier. It looks really massive from close, but then you can also see that it's melting at an alerting rate due to the worsening global warming. Thus, enjoy this true gem while it's still here. Not sure what it's going to be like in 10 to 20 years from now. So many great things to do here in Switzerland during summer and if you want to know which ones are the top 10 cities of Switzerland, then I'm going to see you in this video. Otherwise, if you're more interested in Southeast Asia, then let's meet over there.